Because you're watching this, we're guessing you're a coach. So you've made a decision to serve others, to master a skill, and you've spent your whole life following your passion, helping people, competing, creating an impact on people's lives, and just teaching. And although you love it, we can likely tell you a story you recognize, perhaps even intimately. So the subject of our story grew up like everyone else. They went to school, they were involved in sports, maybe it was a lot of different sports or maybe even just one. And at some point, either by some earlier event or at the end of schooling, their sport participation ended, at least as their main focus of their life. So when trying to figure out what they're going to do with their life, they think, well, do I want a desk job? Do I go to law school or business school or medical school? And uninspired by those, they think, well, the people I really looked up to are these coaches I had. Well, maybe I can do that. So they started coaching, and lo and behold, they started loving it. They lived for coaching and found a great joy and passion of watching people improve, of seeing the light bulb go off in someone's mind, and of, dare we say, still getting to compete. This feels good, they say. This doesn't even feel like a job. And they felt like they belonged, that people liked them, and that they were happy. And at the time, they weren't concerned at all about mastering the business side of coaching, or even that there was a business side. I mean, someone paid dues, and someone wrote a check, and what else is there? So their goal was basically to make better athletes and impact more people, and just to see that light bulb go off. But then as they went up the ladder and promoted to higher coaching positions and more job-like things are added to their responsibility. And they may or may not like them, but things could be worse. They could be at an office all day, and they still get to do what they love, which is to coach and, and teach people. After a while, though, the past seems like there are limitations. Limitations on how many people they can impact. Limitations on who they can coach and when. Facility limitations. And limitations on how much money they can make. And then they think, well, I'll build my own facility, or I'll go find this bigger job which will solve all of my problems. But for good or bad, those don't seem to happen, or even the bigger job doesn't lead to the promise. Who knows why? I mean, that person is smart and is really good at what they do, and they're passionate, and they help people. But they're living the life that they imagined for themselves or their families, or really are they? And they, they don't think so. So at this point, they need to understand that this is an all too common feeling among the coaching community. In a recent poll, every coach polled said it was incredibly important to them to have an opportunity to impact more people. Every single coach said they wanted to impact more people. So what happens at this point? So you've seen this movie. There are few who seem not to care about impacting more or in a bigger way, and great for them. But most people don't feel that way. The fork in the road comes. One road leads to no longer coaching and going for a job to make more money for their family or even for their own pride. And the other road leads to resigning themselves to, you know, this is all there is for me, which often leads to declining energy or declining performance. You see, there's, there's nothing wrong with this person. Those are normal feelings. Happiness and fulfillment of work have been researched for years. And the main contributing factor to happiness or fulfillment at work is progress. Feeling like there's progress, or even the potential of progress. So when faced with no progress, what happens? It's only normal that people either move on to something else, or even kind of give up. And give up, is, is that the example that they want for their family and for their athletes? The people that they're leaders for? So how to overcome that? Well, from studying consistent elite performers, we found that little habits yield big outcomes. And the expectation of yourself in executing those little habits has a dramatic effect. Even little things done well and consistently can make a monumental shift in, in that perception of, you know, can you get better or can you impact more? So in helping to overcome that feeling, or even just to make your coaching a little bit better, we have a task for you for the next three days. So here it is. Change your mindset before practice or before a coaching session. It's that simple. So here it is laid out. So 15 minutes before you start the session or before you're interacting with people before the session, sequester yourself. So remove yourself. 
So maybe it's driving in the car on the way there. Maybe it's going into your office and closing the door. Maybe it's finding a quiet place in a coffee shop or taking a private walk. Just give yourself from some space, wherever it can be. You, you choose, just get away. 15 minutes out, it doesn't have to be more than that, just 15 minutes, and you can find 15 minutes. And in that time, ask yourself three questions, just three, and write these three down. So ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? As in, why am I coaching? What do I love about it? What could I love about this coaching this session? And then ask yourself, what am I trying to help accomplish in this practice or in this session? As in, what's the desired outcome? And in this, try and be really specific. Focus on one thing in that practice session as the goal. And it could be anything from learning a specific skill to keeping your team on track towards a goal or executing a specific training endeavor, the best the athletes can do today, or even getting the culture to the best place possible. So what are you helping to try to accomplish? And, and lastly, ask yourself, what mindset or energy do I need to have to accomplish that goal? So what energy do you need to bring to that session? If you had to rate it one to 10, what would you rate it? What, what level would your energy be for you to be at your best? And then picture yourself acting like you have that energy. Feel what it feels like to have that energy and remember a time or multiple times that you've had that energy before and you've seen people interact with you differently. Even with fit, picture what it feels like after that session is complete and the satisfaction of you having the right energy for your athlete, what that does for them and for you. And then live into that feeling and kind of see yourself acting into that energy. And it works. So to recap, though the three questions so it's number one why am I doing this and a different way to say it is to find the reason to be great what's your reason you're gonna be great today number two what am I trying to help accomplish and be specific for just today and three what energy do I need to have to best achieve that goal for this session for my athletes or the people I'm teaching and coaching and see yourself and feel it and kind of get that number of rating in your head. Do that for three days in a row. Commit to it now. Just decide you're going to do it. It's really not hard. You're going to do the practice or the session anyways. Just give yourself 15 minutes ahead of time and ask those three questions. If you write in a workout book or make, maybe take a notion, notation of your effectiveness or the response you get from the people you're coaching as you're doing this, write down the number of your energy rating what you intend it to be, maybe at the beginning of practice or of the session. And at the end of the session, reflect on what the energy was, when you were at your best, and write down that number. You don't have to be perfect and have the whole session. Just when were you at your best, write down that number. Were you close? It's okay if you weren't. You, you can get better at it. So do this three days in a row. Just commit to it. Do it. It's not going to hurt anything. It's only going to make you better. And we'll be back in a couple days to see how it's going. So good luck and commit yourself to doing it. It's only three days. It's only 15 minutes a day. And we'll talk to you in a couple days.